What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Team Runner here and welcome back to another video and today I want to sit down and talk to you guys about the one thing that you can do in your running training to help you become an all-round stronger runner. <music> So what is this one thing and why is it so simple? Well, we see the best high school runners and collegiate runners plus world-class athletes doing this as well. It really helps your aerobic development, builds up massive strength and overall makes you a stronger runner. I'm excited to talk and dive in a little bit more about this today. And over the course of two or three training blocks, you'll find a massive improvement in your overall running development. If you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and we'll kickstart. So let me give you one simple clue for what this one simple thing is all about and we're going to use the American, let's call it the running development system because it is really from high school through to college and then out the other side, that whole period of their life where they go through high school into college and work through the gears as they go through because for me it's a great example for us runners, us more recreational runners that we can take from them and utilize in our own training. It's been something I've been doing for a fair few years myself and I'm finding some big developments from it and what we're going to look at is simply this they have different seasons of running they do track seasons and they do cross country seasons and they'll spend dedicated periods of time doing more base work and then they'll spend more dedicated periods of time doing more race pace stuff let's take the two main seasons that they really focus on which is cross country and track and we can basically split that in half because what they're doing overall with those two uh, seat running seasons combined is working on their full aerobic development, the full running package, but split it in half and they're working on different elements of their running system. So for example, their cross country season where they're doing longer hill repetitions, doing a lot of reps on grass, doing longer tempo runs, they're building that aerobic engine, they're really working all of that side of things, whereas when they get to the track season, they're more working on the fast twitch muscle fibres, faster turnover, race pace work, they're getting that raw speed in there. So the two seasons combined come together to make the all-round running package, but working on them individually is obviously less strain on the body and gives the body a chance to work on each system individually. So if you hadn't gathered where I was going with this, let me spell it out for you, let me explain what this one simple thing is that we can do to help us become stronger runners. So what that simply is, is over the course of two or three training blocks, we can replicate what uh, what they do over in that American running development system through high school and college and out the other side. And that is we can train for different distances, working on different stimuli in the body. So for example, like myself, I might do a 10K half marathon, then a marathon training block. This is something I've done on a regular basis throughout the years, and I feel like it's helped me become a stronger runner overall. If you love a good track season and a road season, then feel free to do track, road, track, road. Or if you love shorter distances again, and consider something like mile training, 5K training, and 10K training, and then go back and repeat. Because what these different training stimulus do is they work on different systems in the body. So let me use mine as an example and then kind of compare to what we were talking about earlier and the whole periodization thing of working where the Americans, uh, college and high school kids might be doing uh, cross country and then track. For me, my 10K training block is gonna be a bit similar to their track season where I'm working on race pace stuff, fast twitch muscle fibers, getting everything firing, fast turnover, everything is geared up for more speed. Whereas my marathon training block might be more like their cross country season where I'm doing longer, more aerobic development work, longer paced intervals at marathon pace, for example, tempo work, and long runs, spending more time on feet, getting more mileage in, and just working on that system. So then when I come back round to uh, doing 10K training again, which I'll be doing after my London Marathon training block, then I'm gonna be in a better position to go again, work on that speed, get faster, go through the gears, through a half block, to a full block, and then back down and around again. And so what I want to do now is share five simple tips with you guys as to how you can integrate this into your training safely and work on becoming a stronger runner yourself. Because ultimately, Ultimately, a lot of us train in different ways, but I'm gonna give you two main types of training, and that is kind of doing big blocks of training like I do, where I do 12 to 16 weeks dedicated to a specific distance, or maybe four or five years ago, my first two or three years of running, I used to train like this, where I had a 16 week block, but within that block, I do mini blocks, and I do three weeks 
and then have a down week. And in those periods, I do the first four weeks uh, aerobic based building, and then the next four weeks, I do full on speed work. And then the next six weeks, I get very specific for whatever race distance I was training. And then the last two weeks would be a taper. However, you're training at the moment, whether it's like that, whether it's like in a full on training block like I do, or it's all about 12 weeks of specific distance work or completely different, let me share some things with you that might be able to help. My first tip is gonna be, if you're not used to this style of training and this is all new to you, but you want to start working through the gears of different distance training blocks, then consider when you're doing your speed work, just to kind of let your body ease into it, stick to goal pace work for the moment. Don't try and go super fast and really stress the body out because you're not used to it. Goal pace work is a great way to start. Obviously for me, during training blocks, as you become uh, a runner that's got used to this type of training and can handle putting block after block after block together and trying all of this out, you might want to do some faster than goal pace work at the beginning, but then in the final few weeks, get very specific and dial in. Whereas if you're just starting out, it might be worth considering just sticking to goal pace right the way through just so that your body gets used to it. It's not too stressful on the body, but your body gets into a good routine where it knows that when you come to do some kind of speed work, it knows what intensity you are about to throw at it. And my second tip is gonna be throw in some time trials at the beginning of your training block. Some people like to do them beginning and end, but for me, what I like to do is throw in kind of a marathon pace time trial or a half marathon pace time trial or a 10K pace time trial workout. So I don't run the full distances, but I do some kind of workout, which gives me an indication as to how marathon pace feels at the beginning. Then once you've got your next two training blocks done and you come back around to doing that training block again, you can replicate that workout and go again. So for example, in this one I did 4 by 12 minutes in the first or second week of my training block and I ran that at my goal marathon pace to see where my heart rate was and how it felt and I then looked back at my previous training block compared heart rates and things and as an example I, can, I have come down from running 166 beats per minute for my first workout in that old training block to now 157 beats per minute in this new training block so I can see a massive difference between the two it's a great confidence boost and it's a great way to set a benchmark so that when you come back to it in the future, you know where you were last time and how much further forward you are this time. And tip number three, I know this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but it's completely up to you, but it's something that I do recommend, and that is get appropriate footwear for whatever training block you're in. So for example, with my 10K training, I do like to have lighter, faster, nimbler shoes. Some great examples are the Nike Streak Fly, uh, the Skechers Razor Excess, the Puma Liberate Nitro, uh, the New Balance Rebel version 2. All of those type of shoes were fantastic for 10K training because they feel light, they feel poppy, and they make me want to move. They're not a type of shoe that I consider in a marathon training block because when I'm putting in long miles and I need a lot of cushion uh, to protect the legs and help them feel good for the next day, they're not the shoes that I would want to consider using. I would certainly wouldn't likewise rock up into a 10K training block wearing some max cushion shoes like the Bondi, the Hoka Bondi, or even the Nova Blast, Asics Nova Blast. I wouldn't consider doing 10K pace into in those. So get the appropriate footwear for the appropriate training block that you're in. And my fourth tip is going to be get a coach or get a training plan if you are thinking on embarking this type of stuff. Don't get me wrong, not everyone needs one and not everyone needs a training plan, but I think when you're embarking on this type of training in the in the beginning and all you've been used to is something like just kind of running easy and moderate miles or just easy and doing the odd workout here and there, a whole different structure and ball game can be quite a daunting prospect and having a bit of guidance there along the way can be really, really beneficial. There's a lot of training plans out there I mean, Ben Parks, he's a great YouTuber. He's got some great training plans on his website. Sage Canada, he's got training plans on his website. There are loads of training plans out there that you guys can go and use. And ultimately, there's plenty of coaches out there that are prepared to give you a lot more of a tailor-made fit. I'd obviously always recommend a coach uh, over a more generic training plan because they're gonna know a little bit more about you and provide guidance based on your running style and running type. But uh, training plans are there if you feel like you don't quite want to 
coach, but you want some kind of structure in place. So having one of those in place for your different distances that you're training for will really, really help you. And the fifth and final point is gonna to be to take your recovery seriously. Make sure you invest in something like a massage gun or a foam roller. And if you're like me, I do also invest in having a sports massage once a month. It is absolutely invaluable and I cannot stress to you how important it is to keep on top of your body when you're going into more intense training. I find it in particular, I find I need it more when I'm doing shorter distance faster work because my body is much more used to doing longer paced interval work like marathon training. I can often get by through marathon training just because I love being out there and time on feet. The training is a bit less intense, it's just the duration that tends to tire you out. Whereas with the fast the twitch stuff, the faster turnover, that's not what my body's used to. So that usually takes its toll on me. So I have to really focus on my recovery during that type of training block. And again, if it's something that you're not used to, you might be used to doing the fast stuff. But when it comes to the longer duration stuff, that might be where you start to fall apart a little bit. So do consider taking your recovery seriously. There's plenty of great products out there to help you with that. But honestly, a massage gun and a foam roller and a good old sports massage will be your best bet. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on the one thing that you guys can do to become a stronger runner. And then of course, helping you there with five simple tips to integrate that into your training. I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below because of course all of us train differently all of us train uh, we're, we're either runners that just love to go out there and run for fitness health and well-being or some of us want to become the best that we can be it's just such an all-inclusive sport and there's so many of us with different opinions but I'd love to know how you train in the comments below do you train in blocks or do you just run casually and then whenever a race comes up try and do a little bit of race pace work I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below let's get that discussion going and uh, yeah I'd love to hear from you if you haven't already checked out some other videos on the channel make sure you do there is some great marathon strength uh, workout videos and there's of course some great long run videos I'll link to a couple of them on this end screen here so hopefully you guys can click through and enjoy those as well if you enjoyed today's video guys make sure you give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I'll see you in the next one until then